During the MotoGP season of 2015, Ducati had implemented a new winglet design to their fairings, a design which they iterated upon several times during that season. By the 2016 season, almost all manufacturers had followed suit with their own winglet designs. During that same season, several riders raised safety concerns about these new winglet designs to the FIM. The FIM later implemented a ban on these dangerous winglet designs with the following rule. Anything not integrated into the body streamline that may provide aerodynamic effect, including downforce, are not allowed. This rule was shortly after its announcement dubbed to be a winglet ban, and controversy ensued, with some fans blaming the FIM to consciously be trying to remove Ducati's advantage. Calling the rule a complete ban proved to be wrong, as by the 2018 season, the technical director of MotoGP, Danny Aldridge, now approved updated winglet designs, where the wings have been integrated into the fairings and are, according to Aldridge, no longer a safety concern. Updated versions of these designs are expected to be seen at the first race at Qatar in March. So in today's episode of Speed and Noise, we're going to explore the often misunderstood subject of motorcycle aerodynamics. Motorcycle aerodynamics were a hot topic as early as in the 1930s, when manufacturers such as BMW were experimenting with fairings shaped almost like a torpedo, often referred to as dustbin fairings. They discovered that by shaping the fairings in that way, they could increase the top speed of their motorcycles without adding additional power. These dustbin fairings were used in GP racing into the 1950s, with a Motoguzzi V8 being clocked at an incredible 301 km per hour at the Mira test track in France, 1957, and 286 km per hour at the Belgian GP of that same year. The bike produced only 75 brake horsepower, weighing in at 135 kg. Considering the low power output, the speed is astounding. For a comparison, an unrestricted 2012 Suzuki Hayabusa weighing in at around 264 kg wet with 197 horsepower clocks in at 327 km per hour, only 26 km per hour faster than the 1957 Guzzi. So why is that? Well, the important factor affecting a motorcycle's top speed is its gearing. But consider that the Moto Guzzi was actually geared for a race and it was still fast. So the gearing can't be the full answer. The most important factor affecting the top speed of the Guzzi was its dustbin fairing, which provides an astounding CDA value of 0.186 square meters. The CDA value is the combined drag coefficient and reference area, so to get a small CD value, you want a streamlined shape of the object. And to get a small reference area, you try to minimize the frontal area of the object. The smaller the number, the less drag force. So for a comparison, the 2012 Suzuki Hayabusa has a CDA value of 0.27. So the Guzzi would be exerted to 30% less drag force at any speed as compared to the Hayabusa. Interestingly, if you put the dustbin fairing on a Hayabusa, its top speed would increase to 353 km per hour. That speed increase would require an additional 75 horsepower at the rear wheel without the fairing. This gives us a perspective on how big influence the CDA value of a motorcycle has on its top speed. So why isn't dustbin fairings used in today's MotoGP racing? Well surprise surprise, the FIM banned them in 1958 because of safety concerns. These safety concerns were related to the fact that the very thing that made dustbin fairings so efficient at sheeting wind head-on also made them dangerously unstable. This is because the center of air pressure on a dustbin fairing is ahead of the center of gravity, which introduces a strong yaw or left and right turning force on the motorcycle. Have you ever tried to carry a large sheet of cardboard on a windy day? When the wind is blowing towards you, nothing happens. But if it comes in at an angle, you are both pushed and pivoted to the side. This same principle applies to dustbin fairings. In fact, side winds are concerned also in modern racing, where many teams drill holes into the fairings to reduce lateral pressure at especially windy tracks. But what exactly did the dustbin fairings do that modern fairings don't do? They covered up the enemy of smooth laminar flow, the rider. The rider of a motorcycle is the cause of most of the turbulent flow, which increases the CD value significantly, 
and thus increases the drag force. Since fairings cannot cover up the rider entirely because of issues with instability, the focus of most manufacturers have been to minimize turbulent flow around the riders. Turbulence around the rider is important not only because of the drag it creates, but also because it requires more physical effort from the rider. This is a very important factor because a tired rider is not a fast rider. So to minimize the turbulence around the rider, manufacturers have borrowed several solutions from the aerospace industry, such as strakes, turbulators, pressure ducts, winglets, and vortex generators. These devices cause controlled turbulent channels that add small amounts of drag but effectively create an invisible air wall over the rider's body, protecting them from turbulence. The manufacturers have been experimenting with these solutions for quite some time. For instance, the 1999 Aprilia RSV Mille had vortex generators implemented into the fairing. So what happened in the 2016 season was simply that it became more evident for the average spectator that the manufacturers were experimenting with these aerodynamic solutions. Now the winglets that they were experimenting with had two major advantages. The first advantage was anti-wheelie at high speeds which provides more acceleration since modern more GP bikes tend to wheelie at all speeds. The second advantage was front tire grip when braking from long straights, where the winglets provide downforce pushing the front wheel down. Now there were three downsides with these winglets. The first downside is that in effect these winglets were airfoils fastened to the sides of the fairings. These airfoils needed to be very stiff in order to provide predictable flow. This led to designs which were effectively small, stiff and very sharp fins, which could be very dangerous if they hit a rider. The second downside was that turbulence was created for riders that were behind the bikes with winglets. This made their bike's front end start to shake violently. Third downside was that it was exhausting the riders physically, since the downforce requires the rider to use more strength to steer the bike and because of turbulence around the riders themselves. So the two safety concerns were raised by riders to FIM, who as you know implemented a ban on those dangerous winglet designs because of this. The updated fairing designs for the 2018 season looks really promising, both in providing downforce but also minimizing turbulence around the rider. We shall see what the outcome is, but we are surely in for a really exciting season. I hope that this video helped you understand motorcycle aerodynamics a bit better, and that you are now prepared for those heated debates with your friends. If you like this video and you want to see more, then please subscribe to the channel. If you want to support this channel, then the best way that you can do that is to share this video on social media. Also press like and comment below. As always, see you next time!